Welcome to the fourth video in our Getting Started series. Now this video, like our last, is going to be compatible with VCarve Desktop, Pro and Aspire. So we're going to build on the things that we learned in our last video, which was the VCarve toolpath. So we're going to add to that a clearance bit. Then we're also going to take a look at the chamfer toolpath and the drill toolpath, along with we're going to learn how to trace a bitmap. Let's get into the software so I can show you how to make this open sign. As you can see, I have a fresh new copy of VCarve Desktop up here and running. As I mentioned before, the tools that we're going to cover in this tutorial are also available in VCarve Pro and Aspire both. First thing we need to do is to create a new file. And we're going to go ahead and set up our job. So it's a single sided job. And the width of our sign is going to be around 13 inches or so. So I think that if we create a job size of 15, by 10. That should do the trick for this particular sign layout. The thickness of my material, this piece of granite corian we happen to have, our marble colored corian we have kicking around the labs, it's about a half inch thick. So I'm going to go with that right now. When it comes down to creating our tool paths, I'll go ahead and measure that much more accurately. We're going to use inches as our units. We're going to be zeroing off our material surface. Our XY datum will be in the bottom left hand corner. And because there isn't any 3D content in this at all, we're going to be using a standard resolution. And for our material settings, we're going to go ahead and choose granite out of that list, because that might look pretty close to what I'm going to try and use. And we'll click OK. Now I'll step over to our 3D view and see what that material looks like. And that looks really good. I think that's pretty close to what we have. Um, close enough anyway for any kind of 3D previews I want to send off to a customer. So let's look back down on the top of that and tile our views left and right. That way I can see the 2D view here on the left and the 3D view is over here on our right. Now to get started with this job, we are going to import in a bitmap. And to do that, we're going to go over to our file operations and we are going to import in a bitmap. Now in your tutorials folder that's been installed on your computer, we have a PNG file here called open text. I do want to point out down here in your bottom right that we also can import in many other different bitmap file formats. So you're not just limited to a PNG file. I'll select that and I'm going to go ahead and click open. And you'll see the software pops out right in the middle of your job space. We can see it both in the 2D and the 3D view. And in both the 2D, I can turn that bitmap on and off. And in the 3D, I can do the same. Okay, we can't actually use this bitmap to do any v-carving with because we need a closed vector. So the way around that is to actually go in and trace this bitmap. We could do that by hand if we wanted to, but that would be a lot of work. And we happen to have a tool built into our software called bitmap trace. So I can go ahead and click on that. Now, if you're interested in the ins and outs of how to use this tool, we have a great video and I'll put it in the related video section called how to use the trace bitmap tool. For right now, I'm just going to go over the features that we need to get this open sign made. So this is a black and white bitmap, so I'm going to choose to trace a black and white bitmap. Number of colors, there's only two, so that doesn't matter. We're not going to worry about anything down here. We're just going to use the defaults that come with your installed piece of software. Now, I am going to make sure that I group those vectors together, and then I'm going to preview that. And you can see in our 2D view, you can see the vector that's, that's going to be created for us. It is showing in the 3D view, but it's hard to see. Because we're allowed to give our layers a color, then we can make it so that it's a little bit easier to see in the 3D view. So if we go up here to our Layers Manager, we get onto our Layer 1 tab, we can go ahead and color any vectors that are on that layer blue, and you'll see that now we can see those in our 3D view, and that looks great. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and close this down. Now what I can do is I can just simply go in and delete this bitmap out of here. I don't need that anymore. And also, I can go up into my Layers tab, and I can delete the bitmap layer that was created when I imported that in, because I don't need that anymore. To make our, little, our life a little bit easier and to keep our project a little more organized, let's go up to our Layers tab again, and we're going to go ahead and slow click on the Layer 1, and we're going to rename this Open Text. And then we're going to create a brand new layer and we're going to start to add the rest of our vectors onto this layer called layer one now and it'll, they'll be colored black so we can keep track of those. We can draw the rest of the vectors that we need right into our 3D view. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and maximize our 3D view. And you can see if I use my right hand mouse button, I can go ahead and twiddle that around. If I want to line that back up again, I can go ahead and just click top here and that will straighten it back out for me again. 
Now this is going to be an oval or an ellipse shaped sign. So we're going to go over to our create vector section and choose to draw an ellipse. And to do this, we're just going to go ahead right into our 3D view and we're just going to draw out an ellipse. Somewhere like that. And you see that as soon as I let go of the mouse button, the bottom field is now highlighted. So I can go ahead and type in 13 inches, because that's the width of my sign. Press tab, that'll bring you over to my other field. And I can make this 8.5 and press enter and that size perfectly. Now I can close that down. Now I want, to, I want to ensure that this is in the center of my job. So I'm gonna go over to my line selected objects tool, click that, and I'm gonna center that in the middle of my job. And that's great, we can close that down. The next thing I want to do is to create a bit of a raised border. So to do that, I am going to offset this vector in about a half inch. And to do that, with that vector selected, I'm going to go over to my Offset and Layout tools, select that. I'm going to go inwards about a half an inch. I don't need to create sharp corners because, of course, it's an oval or an ellipse. I don't need to worry about I don't want to delete the original one. It doesn't matter if I select the new one or not, but we may as well just leave that turned on. And I'm going to go ahead and select Offset. One thing that's nice about leaving that turned on is that I can see the result of that vector offset. So if you had a really busy job, it doesn't get lost. You can actually see what you've actually done. Let's close that down now. The next thing I want to think about is how I'm going to hang this sign. To do that, I think I'm either going to use a chain or a rope. So I'm going to need a couple holes. So I'm going to go over to my Create Vector section again of my Design tab and I'm going to draw a circle. And this circle is going to be about a quarter inch. And I'm just going to roughly position it inside of this border, somewhere around here. I'm just going to go ahead and click, and that'll create a circle that's a diameter of 0.25 of an inch, or a radius of 0.125 of an inch. I'm just going to go ahead and close that down. Now I want to mirror that across my job. So to do that, I'm going to go into my Mirror Selected Objects tool, I'm going to make sure I flip about the job center. I want to create a mirror copy. It really doesn't matter. It's a circle, but I'll do that anyway. And I'm going to flip horizontally across my job. And then I can close that down. So the last thing I want to do is to make sure that the open text is in the center of my sign. So to do that, I'm going to choose the open text, hold down my shift key, and choose this inside ellipse or oval. Then I'm going to go over to my Align Selected Objects tool. And I'm going to look for this section right here, which is Align to a Selection. So I'm going to align the group of open vectors here, and we group those together when we trace them, to this last vector that I selected. And I'm just going to go ahead and choose to put that in the center. And that is perfect. It actually lined up perfectly well to where it should be. So I'm pretty happy with that. If it wasn't, you'd see that it would shift a bit, but it's right in the center, dead on where it needs to be. So let's close that down. Now I'm quite happy with that, and I think that we've got pretty much everything that we need now to go ahead and to start to create some tooling. Okay, to start our tooling, we're gonna go over to our tool paths tab, and we're gonna first start off by checking our material setup. And again, this is to make sure that the software knows what my intention is on the actual CNC machine when it comes to setting things up. So first of all, I need to recheck the thickness of my material, and I'm glad I did this time around because it's actually a little bit thinner than a half an inch. It's actually four, five, five of an inch, which is great. Always handy to have digital calipers around. I'm gonna set my X, Y datum to the bottom left-hand corner. I'm gonna be zeroing off my material surface. There isn't any 3D content, so I don't need to worry about this, but it's right at the very top. And my rapid Z gaps and home start position are safe and appropriate for my machine. So I can just go ahead and click OK. Now the first toolpath we're going to want to look at is going to be a V-carve toolpath. So let's choose that out of our toolpaths operation section. We're going to need to choose some vectors. So what we want to do is we want to V-carve the area between the open text and this inside border. Now what this will give us is a nice sort of beveled edge to our text. But we'll have to deal with all of this extra space here that we don't particularly want to use a sharp pointy V-bit to remove the material. So if we hold down our shift key and we click the open text and we click this inside border and we can go ahead and start to fill in our v-carve toolpath form so our start depth is going to be zero and we're going to use a flat depth that way we can limit how deep our tool is going to go so we're going to choose that 
and our flat depth is going to be 0.2 of an inch. So when our tool gets down to 0.2 of an inch, it's going to stop and create a flat bottom. The first tool we're going to define is our finishing tool, which in this case is going to be a 60 degree V-bit. We're going to want to use a clearance tool. Now the clearance tool will go in ahead of time and remove a whole bunch of material that we don't want the V-bit to have to deal with. So we're going to go ahead and choose use a clearance tool. So what I want to be sure is that in my tool database I have my proper material selected and also the proper machine. And in both cases I'm using Corian and my machine is our Avid Pro 4824. We're going to use this quarter inch end mill right here and we're going to select that. We're going to go ahead and choose an offset tool path strategy for this clearance tool. We're not going to worry about um, using our vector start points or vector selection order. We're not going to project onto a 3D model because there isn't any. We're just going to go ahead and rename this a V carve and we're going to calculate it. So right off the bat, you'll see that we have two tool paths have been created for us. So I'm going to unselect the V carve one for a second and we'll take a look at the clearance tool. So this is all the areas that that quarter inch end mill can get into. So if we preview that visible tool path, you see that once this tool path is done, you can see all the areas that are going to be removed. And then we can go in with our V bit and we can go ahead and sharpen up all those corners. That looks really great. I'm really quite happy with that. Okay, so the next part of the puzzle is going to be those two drill holes that we have up top. So let's close this down. And let's go ahead and look straight back down on our project. And we are going to hold down our shift key and grab these two circle vectors here. And then we'll go over to our drilling tool path. As with most of our tool paths, I'm only going to touch on the things that we need for this particular project. So if you're interested in more information about the drilling tool path, then I suggest you look at the related video called How to Use the Drilling Tool Path. So we're going to start at the top of our material. We're going to cut down 0.325 of an inch. We're going to use a standard drill bit for this. Not a CNC bit, but a drill bit that you might have already in your workshop. We're not going to use peck drilling. We're not going to dwell at the bottom of each pass. We're not going to use the vector selection order, and we're not going to reject onto a 3D tool path. So we're going to go ahead and delete the one off the end of the file name. Now what we're going to do with this tool path is the CNC will actually plunge down in the center of this vector. So we didn't need to make this a quarter inch in diameter if we didn't want to. It could have been half of that or double that. It doesn't matter. The tool path is going to plunge right down in the center of that vector. And that's important to remember. It's not going to pocket it out. It's not going to profile it. It's just going to go straight down in the center of that vector. So if we calculate that, we can preview our visible tool path and you'll see what happens. That looks great. So let's close this down. Now the next tool path we're going to run is going to be the chamfer tool path. So we're going to select this outside vector and we're going to go into our chamfer tool path options. Now again, like the drilling tool path, I'm only going to touch on the features that we need for this project. So if you're interested in the chamfer tool path, I highly recommend that you look at the related video called how to use the chamfer tool path. Our start depth is going to be zero. We're going to use the same V bit that we used for the V-carve tool path earlier in this tutorial. So we're going to go ahead and chamfer down the side of this. So we're going to give this like a beveled edge. And to do that, we need to tell the software what the width of that bevel is going to be. And we're going to need this number later. So let's commit this to memory, 0 0.15 of an inch. It will calculate the cut depth for us. And we're not going to use any overcut. We're going to assume that my bit is nice and sharp. We're going to cut on the outside. We're going to slope downwards and we're just going to call this chamfer and we'll calculate that. If we preview that visible tool path, you'll see what happens. The vector laid on this part of my material and it's chamfered down from there. And that gives us a nice bevel to the edge of our sign. Close this down. Now the last tool path we're going to need is going to be a profile cutout tool path. Typically a profile tool path would cut on on this line, on the inside of the line, or the outside of the line. Outside, in our case, for this particular job. But if we do that, we're going to end up cutting off our chamfer. So remember that 0 0.15? We're going to need that in a second. So let's go ahead and look at our profile tool path. We're going to start at 0, and we're going to cut down the thickness of our material, which is 0.455 of an inch. 
I had to turn on my advanced options because I need this allowance offset option available for me. If this was turned off, you wouldn't see it, so I need to turn it back on again. We're going to use a quarter inch end mill, the same end mill that we used to do our clearance pass in our V-carve toolpath. We're going to cut on the outside of this vector, but we're going to go ahead and offset that out, that 0 0.15 of an inch. So it's going to miss that chamfer and cut out here. We're going to add in some tabs. So we'll edit our tabs and add in four tabs for us, just wherever it wants it. There we go. Close that down. Go back to our 3D view for a moment. We're not going to worry about any of this other information. This is all part of the advanced toolpath options for the profile toolpath. So we're going to avoid all that. And we're just going to go ahead and rename this cutout. And we'll calculate that. Then we can preview that visible toolpath. And you'll see that we'll miss the chamfer that's left behind. And we have our tabs. Now that's great. That looks really nice. I'm really quite happy with that. So now the last thing we're going to do is just reorder our tool paths so that when we save them out, we can group a couple of them together, saving us some tool changes. So we're going to close this down and we're going to drag our V-Carve tool path, the part of the tool path that uses the V-Bit to the top. We'll go ahead and drag up our chamfer tool path because we'll run them in this order. We'll do the V-Carving first, then the chamfer. Then we'll go ahead and do our clearance and then we'll do our drilling. And then if everything looks okay, then we can go back and run our cutout toolpath using that quarter inch end mill. So let's go ahead and save those off, making sure that we choose the right machine and post processor. And we're gonna save off our visible toolpaths as one. So we're gonna turn on these first two toolpaths because we're gonna save those off as one toolpath. We'll click save. And we'll call these zero one, It'll be the first toolpath we're gonna to run. We're gonna call it V, curve, and chamfer. And we'll save that off. Then we'll go ahead and hide those two, and we'll go ahead and choose this one, the V-curve, the clearance toolpath, and we'll save that off. Okay. Then we'll go ahead and save off our drilling toolpath. And then lastly, we'll save out our cutout toolpath. And there we have it. Okay, now that I've got the uh, G code or my toolpath saved off on my USB drive, I can just bring them over to the laptop that's going to control our CNC and I can get that started. Now, with all of these different controller softwares, you're going to need to know the one that works or how it works on your CNC. And if you don't know for sure, then check the manufacturer's website and they'll be able to fill you in. So let's get this over there right now. So the next steps are going to be to get the CNC machine warmed up and ready to go. And then we're going to go ahead and use double-sided tape to fixture this piece of Corian. This, it's an offcut from a countertop, I guess, to our waste board. And then we're going to go ahead and add on this blue mask. Now, what this is going to do is going to allow me to be able to spray paint the finished part and only get the paint in the recesses where I want it to be and leave the surface nice and clean. Fingers crossed. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And then once I get that all secured down, I'm gonna go ahead and set my XY datum just like you saw me do in the software. So we have our zero plate. I'm gonna go ahead now and set the distance my tool is off the surface of my material, just like I had told the software I was gonna do. And then we're gonna get straight in to carving.
I'm really happy with that. It turned out really good. So we added to um, our VCarve toolpath the idea of using a clearance bit to get rid of all of this extra material here. Um, we added a chamfer toolpath to give us this nice bevel around the outside edge. And then we used our drill toolpath to put these two mounting holes in there. And the end result looks pretty darn good, I think, in the end. Now, please join me in our next video, where again, we're going to be using VCarve Desktop Pro or Aspire. And I'm going to show you how to do, a, to do a 3D layout and how to maximize your 3D content by showing you how to do a sketch car version of that and also the proper 3D tooling so we can cut it out on the CNC machine. See you then.